Hello friends, this video on force and laws of motion part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction What causes motion? Force Balanced and unbalanced forces Galileo's idea of force and motion Newton's first law of motion Newton's second law of motion Mass versus inertia, Newton's third law of motion, and conservation of momentum. So, what is the objective of this lesson? From the name of the lesson, what do we see? We see force and laws of motion. So, in our previous lesson, we talked about motion. We talked about what is motion. What are the different types of motion? We discussed about circular motion. We discussed about uh, rectilinear motion. We also talked about some of the quantities which are needed to describe the motion of an object. For example, we spoke about speed, velocity, acceleration, distance, displacement. So these all were the quantities which when put together give us an idea about the motion of an object. And so that is where we use the three equations of motion which actually describe the motion of an object, right? So that was our agenda in the previous lesson. So that's what we studied. We studied about motion. So now in this lesson, we want to know what causes motion. Why does motion take place at all, right? So let us see the cause of motion. Now, what is the cause of motion? An external force. What is an external force? Okay, let us see. Let us look at this example. Do you think that, uh, suppose if you have a ball, do you think that a ball ever moves on its own? If it does, we fear that it is some uh, magical or mysterious event that is taking place, right? So normally a ball when kept on a table will never move on its own. It will be at rest. It will move only when you apply some force on it. Right? So external force is needed to make a stationary body move. So that means a body which is at rest will be in motion only when an external force is applied. Similarly, let us suppose a body is moving. Right? So do you think that the body stops on its own? Yes, it does sometimes. Let us suppose you applied some force on the ball, the ball started moving. But will it keep on moving indefinitely? Not at all, right? After some point of time, it will stop. So why do you think that the body stopped? The body stopped because again there was an external force which was applied on it. And what was that force? that is frictional force right so we will let us not concentrate much on frictional force and all those stuff here here what i'm trying to say is a body which is at rest will start moving when an external force is applied on it similarly a body which is moving will come to rest only when an external force is applied on it so that means force is the cause of motion force can make a body move force can stop a moving body Right now, in different scenarios, you have different types of forces acting on a body to make it move or to stop it. Right? So, we will talk about all those scenarios in detail one by one. I mean, we will not get into the depth at the very beginning. Right? So, gradually, step by step, we will talk about everything. So, now we got the we got to reply to our question what causes motion? It is force that causes motion. So, let us quickly talk a bit about force that what is force so here in order to right now i will focus my study only on motion right so now for that we will talk about these two categories of force that is balanced and unbalanced forces what is a balanced force what is an unbalanced force we will talk about this because this is going to help us to understand the motion of objects so what are balanced forces Balanced forces are equal and opposite forces. As the name says, balanced. Have you, you would have heard of things like um, spring balance, 
बीम बैलेंस वेट बैलेंस बैलेंस मीन्स टू मेक थिंग्स इक्वल ऑन बोथ साइड्स right you you would have gone to a grocery shop and you would have seen the balance which they used to measure things right to measure the weight uh, the weight of objects right so balance means it has to be equal on both sides so forces which are equal and opposite equal and opposite means the forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction i have already spoken about magnitude and direction in the previous lesson while i was talking about scalar quantity and vector quantity what is magnitude the numerical value which defines the uh, which defines the measure of a quantity for example when i am talking of force what is the unit of force it is newton right so let us suppose if there is a force of let us suppose this is one object so if you apply a force of 1 newton in this direction then another force of 1 newton is applied along this direction so that means magnitude of both the forces are same what is the magnitude it is 1 so 1 newton is the magnitude so magnitude of both the forces are same so we say that they are equal forces and they are in opposite direction that is why we say they are equal and opposite so equal means they are equal in magnitude opposite means they are opposite in direction right so force again is a vector quantity i am sure you would have studied about the basic of forces that what is a force what is the si unit of force how do we calculate force in your previous classes even if you have not studied you will study about it in this lesson itself as we go ahead so balanced forces do not cause any change in motion because they are equal and opposite so if you are trying to pull something now what do i mean when i say that you apply a force of 1 newton in this direction that means you are trying to bring this object make this object move along this side now when you apply another force of 1 newton along this side that means you are trying to move this body along this direction now along on both the directions you are applying the same amount of force so what will happen to the object the object will not move in any of the directions so these balanced forces do not cause any change in motion so the best example that you can think of when uh, i'm trying to understand balanced force is the example of tug of war i i am sure you most of you would have played this tug of war right what happens there is a team there are two teams on each side and then you have a, a thick rope which both the teams try to push on both ends now what happens when both of them so the, the these team this team 1 is applying a force along this direction and this team 2 is applying another force along this direction now when both of them are applying force now the forces are opposite in direction that is for sure now when the magnitude of the forces are the same when the forces are equal as well then what happens it is in this condition when none of them wins because both are applying equal forces on both directions right now what happens if the forces are not equal so there comes the unbalanced forces so unbalanced forces are the unequal forces that means the magnitude of the force in one direction is greater or smaller than that of the other direction so in this case the forces can be in the same direction or opposite direction so let, let us suppose if you have an object there can be two scenarios either the magnitude is different or the direction is different let us suppose this is your object o you apply a force of 1 newton along this side and you apply a force of 0.5 newton along this side so what will happen a greater force is being applied along this direction so the body will start moving along this direction right now there can be another scenario where you have this object o you apply a force of 1 newton along this direction you apply another force of 1 newton along the same direction so in this case you can see that the forces are equal but they are equal in magnitude but they are also along the same direction so what is happening the net force along this direction is zero and the net force along this direction is 2 newtons therefore the body will start moving along this direction again right so we can see that the unbalanced forces she causes a change in motion right 
So in this case again you can think of the example of tug of war when let us suppose if the force along this side is more then the entire thing gets pulled along this direction that is the motion takes place along this direction and this party at that instant of time is considered to be moving. Correct? So th this is the concept of balanced and unbalanced forces. So if balanced forces are acting on a body, the body does not move. I mean, I'm not saying the body does not move. There is no change in the motion of the body. Now, when we talk of unbalanced forces, it causes a change in motion because the forces which are acting on the body are unequal forces acting along the same direction or opposite direction. So this is a quick review of balanced and unbalanced forces. So the fact which will help us in as we go ahead with this lesson is that balanced forces does not cause a change in motion whereas unbalanced forces cause a change in motion. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.